Hey y'all, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and this is week 24 of the Master Electrician Exam Prep Series. We're going to be dealing with pipe fill this week, and this is part one. Now, this is the Master Series, and it's assuming that you've already taken and mastered our free 10-week journeyman series. If you haven't seen it yet, you can head over to electricalexamcoach.com. When you head over to electricalexamcoach.com, it'll take you in there, and let's talk a little bit about it now. So you head over there, you hit up Electrical Exam Coach. There's all kinds of excellent things there. If you ever have any trouble, you can just call or text me at my phone number there, but you can sign up for our paid version, which includes all the practice tests and unlimited access to the testing center. You also can sign up for our completely free version, which works you through the entire program completely for free. Um, and when you are ready, if these programs and videos have been helping you, if you want to pay it forward, you can also do that as well. So if you'll head over to electricalexamcoach.com, you will click on my account after you sign up. And, you know, type in your username and password. I'm going to put mine in here. That's me at Gmail. I'm going to type in my password here. And then we're going to go ahead and get logged in. And when you're in there, whether you have the free paid versions or both, you can click on your courses. And when you scroll down, you can, it'll let you know what membership level you have and that you can upgrade at any time. And when you scroll down, you can click on any one of the videos. What's cool is, is you don't have to do them in sequential order. You can bounce around if you need to, but if you haven't done them, then you need to do them in order. So this is week one. You'll work through week one. If you have the paid version, you can do the quiz for week one. Then you know, you'll know you watch the video here. Gotta love it. Scroll down, then you'll go to the next topic. It'll take you through until you work through all of the lessons in the program. Okay, and, so today uh, I'm going to make a quick... What's cool about it is, is you guys can actually get on there and it will keep track of your progress for you. Also, if you have the paid version, you'll get to take all the quizzes. But if you look up here, it'll... it'll um, right up here it will actually keep track of your progress as you get further and further into the program and you can take that without the quizzes and tests absolutely for free so i just want to see you guys win i am the electrical code coach this is week 24 let's get to it how many number 12 thhn conductors can you fit inside of a piece of three quarter inch emt when we're dealing with conductors that are all of the same size and insulation rating then we can use annex c it's going to be on page 712 of the 2017 and page 729 of the 2020. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick out our type of pipe. I've made a short video to talk a little bit about the table. So here's Annex C, the table, and this is where you'll always start. You'll use your Annex C tab and you will come to this table. On the left-hand side is going to list your type of pipe, and on the right-hand side is going to list the page number that that table begins on. Now, what we have to be careful with this table, right here at the beginning, it says EMT. And then right below it, you'll see it says EMT again, but it has a little at risk next to it. So there is an A version, it has a letter A, of every single one of these tables, okay? So for EMT, you have the regular table, which is for regular conductors, and then right underneath it, you have the A version, uh, signified by the at risk, okay, and that lets you know that that's for compact conductors only. So we have to be careful not to select from the compact conductor table unless our question specifically says compact conductors. So normally you're not gonna you're gonna look up here and it, see how this table says C1. You want to make sure it doesn't say C1A because that would be for compact conductors. But when you get to the regular C1 table, read the black bold heading and make sure you're in the right table. On the left hand side is gonna list your insulation type right here is going to list your uh, wire size across the top is going to list your pipe size and then when you come down here and tee off it is going to tell you how many of those conductors if they're all of the same size and insulation rating can fit inside of that conduit so again you start back there at your annex c tab at annex c at the beginning table you find your type of pipe you find out what page number it's on and you're mindful to make sure and watch out for the at risk and make sure that you choose the normal table. When you get to the table, make sure it doesn't have a letter A up here, okay? Because that would mean you're in the compact conductor table. Then when you know you're in the right table, on the left-hand side is going to list all of your insulation types. Now, it's okay if your insulation type is listed in multiple parts of this table. You can use anywhere that it's listed on the left-hand side. But sometimes you'll find, let's use THHN as an example, you won't find your wire size here. And you're like, oh my goodness, do they not make that type of wire? No, you just need to keep looking on the left-hand side. You may even have to flip a page until you find your t insulation type here and the gauge wire that you're looking for. So you find THHN, you make sure that your wire gauge is listed. You're gonna use a piece of paper or some type of straight edge because this, this table can get crossed very easily. 
and you're going to come over here and you're going to tee off with your size pipe. Your size of pipe is listed right here. You're going to come down and tee off and that is going to tell you how many of those wires you can fit inside of that pipe. So with that being said, we followed our process. We're remembering to watch out for the at risk symbol when we're first looking up our table. Now we're going to find our insulation type, wire size and pipe size. And when we find THHN and we come off and we tee off with our size pipe, we find that you can fit 16 number 12 THHN conductors inside of a three quarter inch piece of EMT. Great job. Okay, let's start all over. How many number four RHH conductors can you fit inside of a piece of one and a half inch RMC? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to head to our Annex C tab. And if you do not have that, if your um, state allows you to make your own tabs, just make your own Annex C tab. So we head to Annex C. We're going to find our type of pipe. We're going to make sure that the at risk is not listed next to the RMC. Then we're going to find our page number and we're going to flip there. When we get there, we're going to find our type of pipe. Make sure that we're in the right column. And then we're going to make sure that we're in the right table. Make sure we're not seeing an at risk up there next to the table number. Now we're going to find our insulation type and pipe size. So we come down, find our in, uh, conductor size, our insulation type and our pipe size. And we are going to tee off and we're going to find out that you can fit six number fours in a piece of one and a half inch RMC. Great job. How many one not THW conductors can you fit inside a piece of two and a half inch Schedule 40 PVC? So when we're dealing with the conductors, all the same size and insulation, we're going to head over to Annex C. When we get to Annex C, we're going to find our type of pipe. Being mindful of the at risk symbol, making sure that we don't select that table. Then we're going to find our insulation type, wire size, and pipe size. So when we flip over to our um, table for Schedule 40, we're going to find first our insulation type. So we find down, look for THW. Now we're going to come over to our wire size. In this case, it is one knot, and we are going to slide over to our pipe size, which is two and a half. And when we come down and tee off with all of those components, we're going to find that we can fit eight of them in there. Great job. Let's try a different one. How many more 2 watt THHN conductors can you fit inside a piece of 3 inch Schedule 80 PVC that already contains 5 2 watt THHN conductors? So when we're dealing with conductors that are all of the same size and insulation rating, we're heading over to Annex C. When we get to Annex C, we're going to find our type of pipe and we're going to make sure that we get the correct page number. Being mindful of the at risk symbols not to get the compact conductor table. When we get there, we're going to find our insulation type on the left. We're going to come over to the next column and find our wire size. And then we're going to come off and tee off with the top and find our pipe size. So in this case, we're going to find that the total number it can fit is 11. So we're going to find out the total that we can have. We already have five. We're wondering how many more we can fit in there. So if we take and then we're just going to subtract it out to find out how many more we can fit. So we take our 11 that we can fit. We're going to subtract our five that we already have, and that's going to leave us with six that we can add. And we're going to select C. So if you came up to a pipe that had five 2 watt THH in conductors in it, and you wanted to know how many more you could fit, you would go to this table, you would subtract your five, and find out that you could legally fit six more in there. Now, you know, getting them in there is, you know, in the real world, it may be a different issue, but this would be what the code says you can take. And this is what your test would want to see if you got this question. Let's get to it. Let's do one more. How many more number 10 THWN-2 conductors can you fit inside of a piece of three quarter inch Schedule 80 PVC if it already contains three number 10 THWN-2 conductors inside of it? Remember, we're going to head over to Annex C because it's all of the same size and insulation rating. When we get there, we're going to find our type of pipe and we're going to tee off with the respective page number. Then when we get to that page number, we're going to find our insulation type, our wire size and our pipe size. Remember, we're doing uh, subtraction here because we need to figure out how many more we can fit. So we're going to find out how many total we can have. Then we're going to subtract that out to find out how many more we can fit. So we take uh, the seven that the pipe handles, then we're going to take and minus the three that we already have, and that's going to leave us to be allowed to add four more to that pipe. And we're going to select A. Great job. 
Hey guys, what's up? That's it for this week. I'm super excited that you've allowed me to be a part of your journey. If there's any way that I can help you in life or in business, you can email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. I just want to see you guys win. Let's get to it.